Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. So my name is Alexandra Sinaitis, and I am the Director of Programs at Maryland Humanities, which creates just an organization that creates and supports bold experiences that explore and elevate our shared stories to connect people, enhance lives, and enrich communities. So since I told you who I am, I would love to know who you are and where are you coming from. So I will appreciate if you could say this in the chat box. Um, I also would like to thank you for coming um, to the Designing Culturally Inclusive Programming Series, which focuses on strengthening nonprofit infrastructure and facilitating deep engagement on key topics so that organizations can achieve lasting change. Throughout this series, we will bring practitioners and scholars to help us engage with different themes, such as positionality, collaboration, inclusivity, power, decolonization, and programming, creating like inclusive programming. The series is actually part of the National Endowment for Humanities Special Initiative a more perfect union, which is designed to demonstrate and enhance the critical role the humanities play in our nation, while also supporting projects that will help Americans commemorate the 250th anniversary of the De Declaration of Independence in 2026. So the series actually will not have been possible without the labor and support of the Maryland Humanities staff and also our invited speakers. Um, today's workshop is about um, sharing responsibility and implementing transparency to facilitate long-term engagement. So we have with us Susan Lyle, who has a mission to make the future of work, future of leadership, and future of fundership accessible to all. Susan is an experienced equity-centered coach and facilitator who works at the intersection of digital innovation, social entrepreneurship, nonprofit impact strategy, and for-profit business strategy. Her organization, Startups for All, serves to help purpose-driven founders, knowledge workers, and social entrepreneurs from underrepresented population clarify their not store purpose and achieve measurable social charge, um, social change. Susan holds a BSE in computer science from Princeton University and resides in Portland, Oregon. So thank you so much, um, everyone. And thank you um, so much, Susan, for being in conversation with us today. And I will turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, great to meet you all. And I'm going to try to see, make sure I can see, every, well, see as many faces as I can and as many names as I can. Um, I'm just going to share a couple uh, housekeeping items before we get started. I know that we, we don't have a lot of time. It's just an hour. I want, um, but to center our conversations today, I'm going to share in the chat, um, just first start with the land acknowledgement. Uh, I uh, am based in Portland, Oregon. Let me just get my chat windows here. And I host this event uh, and acknowledge um, the stolen land in which I sit and occupy rests on the ancestral lands and traditional territories of the Multnomah, Malala, Collets, and Walala bands of the Chinook and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River. And I also invite you, if you like to, you can click on the link to see our shared community agreement with Starbucks for All, and you're also welcome to add on to it. Uh, the format for today is going to be an interactive, collaborative learning space. We're going to explore one, what shared authority looks like, and what holding space for generative co-creation looks like. That last part, might we'll, we'll see what happens. This is a gathering that's never happened before of unique um, faces and people from different backgrounds. So we'll see what emerges. The tools we'll use today are um, if uh, for there might be some solo reflection prompts. So as much as it's useful to you, you might want some paper for just jotting and noting things down. The Zoom chat, as you can see, I'm using pretty uh, here today. And uh, we'll also be doing Zoom breakouts. And to help kind of us establish just some, I'm gonna also share 
just some, uh, a, a suggested community agreement as well for today. Uh, takeaway stories and wisdoms, um, not names. So if someone shares an experience, uh, we want everyone to be able to take it with us, um, and, but also to respect the privacy of those who shared. Also allow for grace. Uh, everyone stumbles over their words sometimes. I do this a lot. And we want everyone to be able to speak without fear of judgment. Allow for some uncertainty and messiness. Again, it's okay not to know or to be confident or doubtful. You might wear different hats today. Keep in mind, it is a gathering that's unique. It's a unique experience that's never taken place before. Also take space, make space. Um, we want everyone to contribute when they have something to say. And maybe in the breakouts, this might actually mean uh, letting others speak when there's more, even when there's more that you want to say. And it's also okay to pass. <laughs> so for any reason, no explanation is needed. All right. Uh, any questions on those or okay. So you might be wondering, okay, who's Susan? I mean, Alessandra said a couple things, but what does that all mean? Um, and how does that relate to why I'm here today? So I'd like to start with just giving you a short background about me, just to set context. And then I'd like to hear from each one of you what brings you here today. We'll do um, just a little breakout so that you can start to have conversations and get to know the people next to you, maybe on this side of your Zoom screen on the other or above or below you. Um, and then I have an activity uh, that we're gonna do maybe in this short period of time that we have, and then there'll be Q&A, okay? So for context, why do I care about sh shared authority? Why am I here? Um, I have been in tech for some time, as you heard, I have a BSc in computer science, and um, the first chapter of my life was in the services industry. I worked with a lot of different types of teams, global teams, small teams, different industries, um, corporate, uh, government, law enforcement. And um, what I've learned over the years is that um, to really uh, in tech, <laughs> there are uh, some challenges with kind of moving forward on direction. And when you're thinking about purpose and impact and how do we make a difference at the end of the day, it really comes in my view to the people who are in the room with you. You know, who are you collaborating with? Who are the partners that you bring into your space? Who are those voices? And now fast forward a couple of decades later, I'm in a position where I do have privilege, where I can uh, bring together people from different backgrounds and help drive direction. But I'm also very aware of my own biases, what I bring. And I've been thinking a lot about how do I hold space? where maybe I'm providing some structure, but the direction of the conversation or the direction of the program is really co-created by the people who are benefiting, who need, um, who of the people that I care about, who, where I'm looking to make, um, provide some impact. And so what I do now is I'm a facilitator of open space. I'm just curious, anyone can use, you can use a chat. Has anyone heard of open space principles? or open space technology, okay, or liberating structures as a facilitation technique. Any of this familiar? Okay. All right, so um, I'm gonna share a couple principles in the chat. Open space principles is a something that was created a couple decades ago um, by Harrison Owen, and I can share resources at another time. Uh, it's about gathering generative co-creation, using the people in the room. And it's been used um, with gatherings of hundreds of people across different countries. Um, there's a 24 hour conference that I'm part of and it, how we converse and how we engage center on these five principles that I've shared in the chat. Whoever comes are the right people. Wherever it happens is the right place, whatever whatever happens is the only thing that could have. Whenever it starts is the right time. Whenever it's over, it's over. And the law of mobility is about if you find yourself where you can't learn or contribute, move yourself to a place where you can. Okay. So I want to bring those principles to our conversations today. If you, there's a link there if you wanna learn more about it. But I invite you to think about what resonates with you? 
when you're going through reading these principles to yourself, what resonates, or maybe what seems a little uncomfortable or what maybe sparks some curiosity. Okay, so that's a little bit of the upfront. Now I'd love to hear from you what brings you to this space. So we're gonna do a quick chatterfall. Love to know, uh, you don't have to hit enter yet, but what's um, what brings you to this space today? And yeah, I'll give you a moment to maybe write in the chat, but like, what brings you to this space today? go ahead and type in the chat. I'm going to count down from three and then we can all hit enter. Three, two, one, and hit enter. Curiosity, wanting from Mary, from Elizabeth wanting to keep current with the 250th. Ani, would love to hear from others how they approach this in the real world. Yeah. Okay, um, Elizabeth, if you, I'd love to hear from you. What do you, can you tell me a little more about wanting to keep current with the 250th? What does that mean? Well, so this, this is Liz, the, um, uh, this is part of the more perfect union series that um, National Endowment for the Humanities is sponsoring. And I lead a Maryland heritage area, and we will be encouraging our partners to begin planning for the 250th anniversary of the nation and understanding more about um, what, what you're offering that can be uh, incorporated into some of that planning is sort of what I want to get my, wrap my head around so that I can encourage all our partners. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, planning and participation, um, seeing what else folks are sharing here, uh, learn how to be inclusive with indigenous voices, to learn how to create program that can further support our community. Um, from Ani, am I pronouncing that right? You'd love to hear from others how they would approach this in the real world, in quotes. What is Love to hear more about that. I feel like I've heard a lot about like shared authority in like theoretical terms, mm -hmm. um, like in grad school, but not really in the real world. Like, you know, when it comes to a meeting or a program, you know, how to really apply those principles in a, in a real setting. Yeah, okay. Um, and then any, would anyone else like to share, Sh say a few more words about what they shared in the chat or anything that's top of mind right now? Okay. Well, let's do a little breakout. We're going to put you in groups of, of three and like you to, I'm going to share a prompt in the chat. I like to for you to actually discuss, say hello to each other, um, get to know each other a little bit. I'd like you to consider this question. What does shared authority look like to you? Jumping off of what Ani mentioned, you know, in, in practice or in theory, people talk about it. What does that actually look like? If you were to close your eyes, imagine whatever you're planning for that gathering, or maybe this is a process over time, what does that actually look like to you? Okay. We're gonna put you in pairs for, let's say we're gonna give each other maybe about four minutes. And then what I'm gonna do for, for the next four minutes is I'm gonna find the pairs to quads. So you'll be in your pairs. And then when you join with another pair, share out from each other and notice what might be similar, what might be different in your responses and then we'll come back as a group. Okay, any questions about that? All right, so I'm gonna set up breakout rooms. I think they'll be about, if I can do some quick math here, there might be one group of, of three. Here. Okay. Yeah, so we'll start with about five minutes. Um, 
It'll be about 10 minutes total. So mid, uh, midway through the time, what I'll do is I'll just send a message to say, you know, we're halfway through. I'm going to pair join like room one with room two, room three with room four, and so on. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, welcome back. I apologize. This is part of the unmessiness sometimes if you got caught off um, mid-sentence or mid-word. So I'm very, very curious to hear. There were uh, five groups total, like five quads. Uh, love to hear from each group, actually, to see what emerged in your conversations around this question of what shared authority looks like to you. Any, any volunteers to start? So I, I would like to invite Sean to speak for our quad because he was hearing it all for the first time, but I think he was really abs absorbing it. Sean, if you don't mind. Sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I kind of entered the breakout room. You know, I'm an intern and I haven't heard much about this term, um, you know, um, so so this is all kind of new to me, but um, you know, Elizabeth, sorry, was it Elizabeth? Yeah, I think Elizabeth. Yes, um, she works in a museum setting. And, well, no, not a museum setting. She was telling me about how how um, this term kind of relates to the museum setting and how, um, at least in that case, you know, the curators of museums are kind of gearing um, these galleries, um, giving people the chance to interpret things themselves. And then I also met um, in the in the other break room with someone else, and they kind of. Um, explained how it works and it's and I guess like I, I kind of understood it as you know meeting people where they are collaborating with people and a lot of communication um, centered around the fact that you know um, we are all bringing something to the table and we're all um, kind of working together and it, it's like a win-win situation for all of us and um, I guess just making sure that um, everyone's voices are heard in a sense. That's kind of the understanding I got of it so far. All right, so shared authority, what, what does that look like? Sounds like there's a theme around making sure everyone's voices are being heard. Uh, what about room three? What are some of the patterns or observations that came up in your conversations? This was Anne, Ani, Destiny, Isabel, and Mary. I'm happy to share unless anybody else wants to jump in here. Um, we were talking a little bit about how shared authority um, really depends upon contributions from lots of people and not just one person. Um, it involves listening without an agenda and leaving some room for uncertainty and um, not just consulting others or um, you know, not just doing it for the optics, but really actually getting decisions made um, from others. Uh, but we talked about how that's really difficult in a top-down kind of structure. Um, and it's, you know, if anybody has the answer to how to do that, um, please share. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thinking about sharing power, especially in decision-making. Uh, how about room five? This was Martha, Mary, Peggy, and Sierra. I think we talked about the fact that uh, with our varied settings, um, this question of authority is not only bringing groups together, but making clear, as you discuss, what you're talking about and who's going to be responsible for things, so that it just doesn't get to be an open-ended thing not leading to anything. But yet individuals within the group have authority over their own lives and they can direct them to the decisions that need to be made for them as well as for the group. Yeah, so sometimes there's a dynamic of shifting. How do you balance the collective responsibility versus the individual? And even in the space, how do even I, as a facility, balance my voice with the collective group, right? Um, so thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Uh, seven, Jillian, Samuel, Suzanne, and Toby.
Yeah, I think Suzanne uh, probably said the best word in our group, which was uh, listening, um, maybe propping up voices that were traditionally marginalized. Uh, like the person who spoke earlier, this term was kind of new to me as well. So I was not really understanding um, that we're talking about team-based shared authority. Uh, so I guess the question I would have for the group is how do you, um, how do you have shared authority and also shared accountability uh, when one person seems to be accountable, uh, how does shared authority work in that, in that way? Can yeah. you share accountability too? But That's anyone else from the group wanna, wanna speak on? Yeah, I, I'm not sure I understand that because before anybody can claim authority, one has to know the dynamic of the group and also the ultimate um, parameters that you're, you're speaking about and that you're ultimately trying to learn. So it sounds like there's some questions around what does authority mean? It also depends on the context. Uh, Suzanne, no you're talking to about kind of the upfront. Um, sometimes people might use the words like, what is the container for, for the session or the discussion? Um, accountability is also a very, uh, I would say, um, invokes probably a lot of thoughts, different thoughts, even though it's one word, it probably means a lot of different things to different people as well. Um, so I think that something there is thinking about establishing context and language, you know, what is the vocabulary for the discussions that you're having? Um, okay, and let's go to room uh, 10, Arda, Elizabeth, Kirsten, and Neil. One thing that I found very uh, interesting about our discussion is that Kirsten brought up uh, if shared authority were to happen, some sort of agreement would have to be in place as to how we would go about sharing that authority, what the parameters of that would be. Um, we also talked about the pre-work of sharing authority and how folks would come to the table um, with trust, uh, trust that may take a while to uh, manifest between the parties that were sharing authority or the peoples that were. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think there are definitely some patterns here, right? So here's a group, uh, we had 40 folks, if I'm, yeah, 40, 20, <laughs> but 20 folks, 20 some folks, we're, we're all coming from different pockets of the, the world right now with different backgrounds. And around just this, these two words, shared authority, sounds like what we're imagining all we each have our own little nuance of what that means and so what we did today i think just um not today but now take a step back like you to reflect on what you just heard from each of these various different groups in two words or if you want three that's okay um, i love to hear in the chat what does shared authority mean to you? I'm kind of, kind of going to iterate this on it. Now, thinking and reflecting, incorporating what you've heard from the people in your conversations and the groups today. What two words describe what shared authority means to you? And I'll give you a moment to type this in the chat. Don't hit enter yet. We'll do a chatter fall to try to get it all. Um, uh, so pick. In two words, what does shared authority mean to you? I'll give you a few more seconds here. Excellent. All right, let's kick it off. Three, two, one, hit enter. Let's see it come. Access, create space, purposeful equity, active listening, collective listening. Trust all voices, radical trust, quality, consideration, respect, being heard. All right. So what we just did, I'm curious, sometimes it feels like anarchy. Yeah. That's the question sometimes. Hey, we open up the floor. There's all these ideas. It's, we're diverging, but we also, this is about planning and making action. So at what point do we start tipping the conversations 
to help? And what are the structures of prayers we want in place to help start to narrow and actually have some direction, right? And where, where we're headed. And so I'm gonna bring it together now and sh share um, two reflection questions. I'm gonna put you, I think, yeah, we still have time. So I'd like you to take back, um, think about what you heard just now and what are the ways that what you're hearing today might intersect with your work today? Okay. So what are the ways that today's conversations so far might intersect with your and relate to your work today? And I'm gonna put you back in pairs. This time we're gonna do a shorter period of time. We're just gonna do, um, we're gonna do about three minutes or so. Uh, and maybe actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna do, we'll do, a, we're gonna do trios because I think some of you may not be able to, maybe you may not be able to talk. So if you're in three, just make sure that there's one more person maybe can, can join in. And I'd like you to um, discuss what are the ways that what you just heard might intersect with your work today? Okay, and then we'll come back as a group. Here we go. Uh, welcome back, everyone. <laughs> I know that was quick. And I meant to juggle the rooms, but I think everybody was, um, this is part of, you know, whatever happens is the only thing that could have. You're back in your groups. You got to meet with familiar faces again. Uh, what did you learn? I'll just kind of open the floor. We can popcorn it. Um, did anything in the conversation spark something new for you? In our, just, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. In our discussion, um, one person mentioned about how internally you have to ha change your mindset before you can even go into this type of um, environment. You know, like the idea that uh, I can, I'll just do it myself because I I know what what's being done and I can I can manage and control things that way. That's something that that you would have to internally get. Kind of work through yeah the mindset shifts around what does it mean actually to to share authority um what does that actually look like or to let go what else came up in conversation anything else do people talk about something different I think what concerns me is the, uh, uh, which doesn't concern me. I think it's very refreshing to be at a table with people who are in charge of what they not only do daily, but um, even when they serve. And um, I think it's um, as a, as opposed to to learning or be exposed to who we're we're partnering with on the ground, you know, really knowing what people are doing, the doers, rather than the people who are ultimately in charge and responsible. And I would say that that's what um, looking at a community board uh, that has an open door policy to not only the donors and the givers and the getters, but also the people who are being served. Um, the other is that when you're doing a community program and it sounds like arts and things, it's learning who has the potential to be in the room and be heard from and visualized and hear. Yeah, it's that proximity, right? Absolutely. Um, of, um, <clears throat> of the people in the room, the people you're serving, the communities you're serving, of the people making decisions, what is their proximity? to the folks on the ground. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And what are the ways that, you know, if any of you are in a position where you maybe do have a choice to think about how you hold space, when you hold space, or maybe it's more about the values for the container, right? The structures or the parameters. We are helping to encourage connection. Um, and so, 
Uh, I actually want to zoom out. This might be a little bit of a meta question. If you notice our process that we just went through over the last couple minutes, where first I shared a little bit about myself, we had some solo reflection, and then you met with a partner. And then in your pairs, you came together. And then we kind of we stuck back. We did a little bit of fluid. The flow kind of went in and out. Um, what was that process like for you? Was this new for any of you? Was it familiar? Martha, were you going to say something? Really, but I think that it is, we talked about in our group about the fact that this is very different. Usually we're used to a, a more of a lecture type thing. And here we had to dig in within ourselves to see what the issues were and how we could look at them. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear from what else, what other feelings, feels came up? The safe space here won't. Did it feel frustrating at all for anyone or did anyone feel anything different? Not frustrating, I, but I was being so new to the to the concept. I felt a little <laughs> ignorant at first. Yeah, sometimes it can be like, uh, um, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing what is expected of me? And I'm glad you brought that up, Mary, because that is actually one of the core tenets of open space. The principles where I shared, where you know, whatever happens is the only thing that could happen. But also. Um, that to be comfortable with things not following kind of what you expected, right? The only thing that I can do as a facilitator is set some guidelines for how we want to engage. And then in this process, you know, where is the wisdom? The wisdom is with all of you. I'm meeting all of you for the first time as much as I want to get to know each of you in this short period of time. That won't be possible to really dive in. But what I can do is to change the structure of our, how we have conversations, the prompts, the flow of from small groups to big groups to help encourage as many connections as possible, right? So actually what we just did, I'll let the cat out of the bag and I'll share in the chat, is an exercise from Liberating Structures called One, Two, Four, All. Um, if I can find my chat window here. So if you're curious about what we just did, we did a generative co-creation exercise where as a facilitator, my goal is to help to encourage as much participation from the people in the room in a very short period of time. And this is just one of many different types of activities that one can do. Um, so if you're interested, you can dive into this. Um, there are a lot of different communities on kind of learning more about liberating structures. And um, the power is really at the end of the day, the invitation, right? And as I think um, maybe Martha, it was you, but also a few others, Suzanne talked, I think many of you this came up about what is that agreement? You know, there's different words for it. It can be a community agreement, it can be a charter, it can be guiding principles to just um, uh, Priya Parker, if anyone are familiar with her in her book, The Art of Gathering, she calls them pop-up rules, just for this space, for these, you know, for the next, you know, for this hour, I had to think as a facilitator, what are the agreements that I wanna bring forth just for this space? I don't know who will show up, but I do know in my work um, running, you know, hundreds of workshops with all sorts of different people, when I ask them of these 20, 30 community agreements, which ones resonate with you? I invited them to share with me which ones resonated. And then from those, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna call this list down and I'm just gonna start with five these five, see what happens. So um, as a takeaway, uh, if you're curious about um, this community agreement, um, I'll share the ones, this is what we use for Starts for All, it's a template. It's under the Creative Commons license. You're welcome to take any of it, all of it, um, just following the Creative Commons license. Um, and you can I encourage you to go through it and see what re resonates with you individually and also might what might resonate with your team or your organization. 
So with that, um, I'd love uh, to hear, I just want to kind of step back a moment. I've been talking a lot. And as much as I do have more questions, reflection questions for all of you, but I just want to pause and kind of open the floor to Q&A. Any questions about what we just did or uh, other topics or questions that are top of mind for you? Well, I would say, <clears throat> this is Liz, one of the things that um, came up in our conversation was, um, and it kind of goes back to what Ani was saying as well, it might be helpful to have um, examples of shared authority, perhaps especially for humanities uh, programming, since we're here under the umbrella of humanities, we can look at some success stories and I'm sure they vary really in what they mm -hmm. look like, but a couple of models could be, I think, really helpful in getting us, you know, closer to actual implementation out of the abstract into more concrete. Yeah, I, well, I can share what I do in my context, but I'd love to hear from the group here. Does anyone want to kind of volunteer and share example? There, are there things that you've experimented with, perhaps? Okay. Well then, Elizabeth, I think let's dive into, well, we can take a few minutes to dive into your case. And then I, I'll hand it back over, the mic back over to Alexandra. Um, Elizabeth, can you tell me a little bit more about kind of in, or Liz, in, in your context of humanities, um, is there anything that you've tried or, or you've observed uh, in terms of shared authority and what has worked or not worked well? I don't know if I can get that specific. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I myself work with a lot of different kinds of organizations, and I'd like to be able to help them um, in their program development understand how to, um, yeah, how to let the the priorities rise up from um, from their own communities and you know from varied voices, and and I think that's sometimes a scary prospect um, because. You know, we have this tendency to, you know, give our authority to some hierarchy uh, in terms of decision making and deciding what's important. So uh, I don't know that I have a good example. I'm looking for examples. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we, I hear from Neil here in the chat. I have experimented with shared authority in a museum setting. I can send some examples or articles we've written about it. Uh, Neil, can you tell us more? Maybe just start with like how, in your context, are you defining authority? I was part of a group mm -hmm. that was um, attempting to share authority between a museum and a community that was represented in that museum's collections. Authority in terms of um, decisions about accession, accessioning objects, deaccessioning objects, exhibiting them and programming with um we could have all done a better job as to figuring out what shared authority meant i think it was for a long time it was we'll know when we get there i don't know if we ever got yeah. there and i don't know if we ever knew <laughs> but we we wrote some of us wrote about the experience of doing that and how we attempted to in a way that we hoped was frank and honest about both our failures and our successes. So, yeah. Yeah. So, as an organization, whether you know whether you're in the nonprofit world or not, I when I've worked with nonprofits and also with with startups in both worlds, when we're bringing together a partnership, first question I want to know is what is our purpose? What is our shared purpose at the end of the day? What are we aligning on in terms of our values so that whenever we can establish that trust? And um, I mean, there are many, uh, if you Google, you know, frameworks for visioning and setting purpose, there are a lot of ways of doing this. But I wanna know, uh, even if there's an existing charter, project charter or program charter, my question is who contributed to the charter? Whose words are being represented? So I go back to, you know, my question would be like, what is the shared purpose? What are the spaces that you're creating uh, to help generate that theme. Um, 
as part of Stars for All, we uh, co-created a reimagining conference in August with about a hundred different people that uh, had no one had knew each other from different communities coming together for the first time. And it started six months prior by an invitation to contribute to a community brainstorm. And from that brainstorm, topics emerged, but it first started with that, that invitation. And I also recognize that my, I myself, I only represent certain identities. So if I'm looking for representation from other marginalized communities, um, I'm not black, I'm Asian. I have to think about who am I specifically going to reach out to maybe come with me <laughs> to help co-lead this space. So it's not just myself it, kind of sharing authority. Um, and from Jillian Hand approaching the concept shared authority from arts programming. Yeah, how can we better reflect? Yep, yeah, right. Um, and start local. I, I tell people think about space, pace, and grace. The speed at which sometimes we see in the norm, in the headlines, is not actually the speed at which communities can move. So that's also something to consider is the pacing. We met once a month, not once a week. As we got closer to the event, we were then able to set a faster, uh, kind of more frequent cadence. Um, and then also from Ani, yeah, the Muslim collaboration notes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so think about that shared purpose. And there are also from liberating structures to help hold that space. There are different activities that you can also do to help establish your purpose statement as well. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, I'm, I know you're short on time, so I'm going to leave you with just two questions, right? At the end of the day, we are human. And there are some things that we can control and other things that we can't control. So I invite you to think about just what are the things that you might need to deliberately develop and invest in right, yourself to help advance, kind of move the needle on sh shared authority. And what are the things that you might need to grow, support, or encourage, not just in yourself, maybe of other people? And last but not least, what's one tiny, tiny, tiny little thing that you can maybe do tomorrow to just experiment? Maybe it's the changing the way you phrase something, but just What's one tiny thing you can do tomorrow? Experiment and see what shared authority might look like. So thank you for your time today. Um, you're at the hour. Uh, I'd love to hear maybe in one word, what are you feeling or two words? How are you feeling at this moment? If you care to share, go ahead and type in the chat. Gratitude, intrigued. Thank you, Sean and Neil. Okay. Hopeful, determined. Looking forward. Awesome. All right. Uh, and I. Alexandra has my contact information. You can find me on LinkedIn. If anyone has want, like to dive into any more of the resources I've shared or connect with other people who are doing similar things, feel free to reach out. All right, Alexandra. Yes, thank you so much, Susan, for um, pretty much agreeing to be the facilitator for today's um, event. Um, we really appreciate it. I think we definitely give us some um, ways for us to actually think through about um, shared authority, and especially if we want to introduce new concept in between our organization and we want to actually hear different voices. So maybe creating different exercise, different ways for people to be engaged, um, and also different ways for people to, we can actually hear that voice. So we don't have to use um, the same methods. So we can actually try to explore different methods for us to actually um, hear different voices and also to encourage them to actually to be part of that particular process. As you said, um, it all starts with an invitation. And with that invitation, you can definitely create new things and bring some ideas and have new collaborators or even existing collaborators. So this is 
part, I will say um, this is the first event that is part of the series. We actually have six events. We're gonna have more events coming up where we're actually gonna be exploring different other aspects. Um, next, coming up next Thursday around the same time at 2 p.m. with Dr. Gonzalez. We're actually gonna talk about um, positionality, thinking about our identities. So yes, when we do the invitation, how we can actually make sure that um, we think we reflect about how identities and how um, people actually perceive our identities and how um, they actually respond to it. So that will be the next um, workshop we're gonna have with Dr. Laura Gonzalez. And then we also gonna have annual session as well, where we're gonna talk about thinking about um, planning an event, uh, especially around the 250 celebration or even around the heritage month. We're gonna have conversation on decolonization organization. So we're gonna explore different theme. So I hope you really enjoy today's event and I look forward to seeing you in our next event. Uh, once again, thank you so much for coming and joining us. And I also think, thank you, Susan, for being in conversation, facilitating this conversation with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening or afternoon, wherever you may be.